Hey, what is good guys? My name is Steve Free and welcome back to the channel. Today I will be reviewing for you guys episode number 43 of Dragon Ball Super in which this is another one of those comedic episodes I told you guys that I really, really enjoy. This is pretty much the highlight of the series for me at this point. Basically the episodes, um, it takes place with Gohan and basically Videl out because Gohan is basically going to be interviewing for another position or another job, basically. So this man is just literally the epitome of all Saiyans in that he's the only one that really cares about everyday life. So take it how you will. I think that's pretty cool that they've kind of diverted his character in a way that you wouldn't expect anybody to really get progression in the series because it's so about fighting and all that stuff he's the one outlier in the series because he's doing things that nobody else is doing and i think that's pretty cool he's my favorite character i've said so so many times but in today's episode i'm going to show you guys my new favorite or my new favorite for the moment character and that's pan this episode was basically all about pan it was basically a get to know pan episode so basically the subplot of this episode is the fact that goku and i really like this i really do like this goku is experiencing issues controlling his key and the reason being is because he recklessly used his key when he transformed into the super saiyan blue kaioken times 10 transformation now i really like that because you can you can't say that these episodes are filler when these episodes do this and they tie into the story you can't really call them filler in that it's not a filler episode it's it's just a, a slice of life episode if you guys don't know what that is it's basically where you get to pretty much like a cool down from all the action and stuff and you just see these guys in their everyday you know habitat and the reason i say you can't call these filler episodes is because the term filler is used to describe episodes of the anime if you're talking about dragon ball exclusively that were there basically as padding so for example there are filler episodes that kind of tie in like the period between when Goku and Gohan came out of the chamber and the start of the Cell games where they're just chilling in the Super Saiyan all the time. That's filler. It wasn't in the manga, if I recall correctly. I'm almost positive. But anyways, it wasn't in the manga. It doesn't stay true to the source material. But the thing about Dragon Ball Super is that the Dragon Ball Super manga is not source material. There is no source material. So therefore, it can't be used as padding in that same sense. So it's not really filler. While it is series padding because it's, you know, kind of not what you would expect. There's not action fighting, all this other crazy stuff. It is a bit of a cool down period and they tie it in nicely. So I like the way that they did that. They explained that Goku basically will get his abilities back over time, which is cool. But the reason this happened and he lost the control over his abilities is because he recklessly used his powers. I really do like that so much. But uh, basically, Kyle Samo was like, hey, you should go take care of your granddaughter. He's like, you know, the side of you taking care of a baby would be awesome. So Goku does show up. And this is where we get into Master babysitter piccolo i mean this man knows his stuff and what's hilarious is that he apparently he apparently does this often that's the funny part is he apparently babysits pan consistently he does this shit often because he knows every little detail i would legit not be surprised if he knew just as much about her as gohan and videl did because he literally is like a a godparent and and that's a cool thing you know he probably is her godfather in a sense because you know he gohan's and all that stuff his relationship with piccolo but you know he he legitimately this was hilarious he was like oh she likes this she likes that she likes it when you cut this that way she likes it when you do that and always watch her at all times and all other stuff and i'm like damn and they're like piccolo we know how to raise a baby so piccolo leaves he's explaining this to to goten and um or to to chi chi and goku and i'm gonna rewind a little bit after what i say what i'm gonna say right now and he walks out the door he gets halfway down the block he comes back he's like oh yeah she likes this she likes that are you guys listening to me she likes this and that, that, that. i was like that's so awesome and the baby is like pico yo and i was like this is awesome she liked pan is hilarious i pan is awesome she she legit had a great interpretation in this episode i the thing is that, you know, a lot of people don't really like Pan because of her role in GT. You've got to understand that this is not the same continuity. If they happen to go into that time period, we may see a completely different version of Pan. We may see a completely different version that's not all tomboyish and all that stuff. She probably will be because she'd probably be a fighter too. But, you know, it, it would probably be a different character, which would be pretty cool to see Toriyama's real vision of how that character is depicted. But basically, just rewinding a little bit, talking about habitats for these characters, I enjoyed when Goku was explaining the Chi-Chi because there was a scene where he didn't eat all his food and I really enjoyed it where he was like hey I didn't want to worry you but I haven't been able to control my energy and she was like you have a fever she's like 
you know, she's been like a really good fucking spouse to him in this series. I love the progression that she's had. And I love seeing moments where like Goku's in just like his natural environment because when he was like, oh, it's fine. I won't worry about it. When she suggests that he go ask Kyle sama about it, he's like, I won't worry about it. And then Goten like lays on his lap and he looks at him. He's like, fine, I'll do it. I was like, that, that is awesome. Like that's legitimate. Like little shit like that is stuff that Z and Ball, both of those series just simply did not have very often. And this show is doing it in like at a record you know amount of time because they do it with Vegeta consistently. And I like to see it with Goku too, to show that Goku has some aspects of him being a fatherly figure, you know, a family man. And then, you know, he goes over to take care of Pan and he's like, he's playing with Pan and this is kind of jumping forward again. He's playing with her. He's like, oh, one day you'll go Super Saiyan, which I thought was a nice little fucking Easter egg. I thought that was really cool. And he was like, one day you'll go Super Saiyan too. And I was like, oh, don't play with my emotions like that. You know, don't, don't dick tease me like that. Uh, but you know, he was just like, she's like, Papa, Papa. And he's like, no, I'm grandpa. GG, GG, old man. I'm, I'm grandpa. <laughs> I was like, you know, he's like flying around airplane style. I was like, Goku is legit when he's like this and he's not all fighting and fighting. That's amazing. That's perfect. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. You have to understand that this show is not only about fighting moments like this or where Toriyama's at his best in my opinion, but you know, from there, the episode kind of takes off in that, in a literal sense, actually. Pilaf overheard that Goku is basically sick whenever they informed Gohan of this. And um, he's like, oh, yeah, let's go ahead and just basically attack him. So he, Shu, and Mai go ahead and show up there. They actually wind up kidnapping Pan. And basically, Pan takes a shit and they all start freaking out. And one way or another, the freaking rocket that they're in, or little robot suit, finds its way into space. At this point, Goku and Piccolo and all these guys are looking for Pan. Piccolo's freaking pissed off because they don't know where she is. And uh, Goku just, he's just like, Pan! And she, like, somehow psychically hears him. And, um, you know, she from there winds up basically powering up. And this is the best part of the episode. She literally has the key around her, the aura, everything. She powers up, flies out. She's just in there flying. And she's just remembering that Goku said, you know, you could take, you could fly into the sky whenever he was playing with her airplane, airplane style and whatnot. And uh, she flies all over and she flies basically back home. And this is where things get a little timey-wimey because they're looking for her and they come back inside and they realize that she's on the couch. So they're they're all right. But I don't know if it's a translation thing. Some people said that it was a dream for her. I don't know if that was people just their interpretation of it, watching it raw. But I think that what happened based on the translation I watched, obviously you want to wait a few days for the better fan subs to come out, not the the ones that are really speed subby, but... I think what happened was basically she made her way back before they noticed that she was there or that anything happened, which is really cool, too, if that is what happened. If it's a dream, it's still really cool either way that we got to see that. But nonetheless, you know, I think that was a really cool episode. So let me know your favorite parts of the episode, whether you liked you know, the, the shoe and my stuff, or you like the integration with Pan, or if you like the nice character moments for Goku and Chi Chi and Goten and all that stuff. And, you know, they're kind of like, they're really pushing this Gohan family man thing. And I can't even be mad, yo. I may even drop a video about that. But, you know, like I said in my video about what your favorite part about Super is, I love these moments. So that is it for me, though. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.